Uh, Billy, let's bring in our next guest, Hans Berger. Right. Hans, how's it going, Thank buddy? You. Good. Now, I'm Hans, good. last time you were here, you were talking about a book that you wrote. Right. How's that going? Christ, doing, doing well. Thank you so much. Yeah? It's in your library. One thing I didn't, I was going to uh, talk about is one of the miracles, okay? A lot of miracles during the war, how we survived with God's help, okay? And one time, <clears throat> uh, during the over a year we were on the run from the Nazis and the Russians, it was a very cold night, a couple of feet of snow. We did, my mother and us four kids, and we had a sled, and we didn't know where to stay during the night. So <clears throat> there was an empty building. It was kind of bombed, but enough, safe enough for us to stay overnight. <clears throat> and it was cold, and we had no food, and it was, but what else, what choice did we have? So we uh, stayed the night. <clears throat> and during the night, somebody broke through the door. It was a Russian soldier with a full gear, a rifle, the whole bit. I thought, well, this was it. This is going to just kill us, okay? And um, then he didn't say a word, nothing, <clears throat> because we couldn't speak Russian. Mm -hmm. Mother knew a little bit of Russian, but he didn't say anything. He left. So we figured he's going to bring his buddy, buddies, you know, that's what usually happened with four women, you know. But when he came back, after about half an hour, he brought a bunch of wood with him. He built a fire for us. He had eggs, bacon, and flour. He made pancakes, scrambled eggs, all this stuff for us. Without cooked, speaking? Without saying a word. He cooked all morning. He stayed half the night. Then he packed up his rifle, walked out the Buddha's his helmet, walked out the door, and never said one word. And that's one of my chapters, is, it's titled, Was It an Angel? How, 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 did, he, how did he know where you were? He just ran up on us. We don't know. I think he was an angel. What else? Dressed as a Russian because soldier. Because Russian soldiers don't walk around with eggs in their pockets and bacon, right? Their really? Stuff is usually old. You know, it's it's out in the battlefield. Wow. So that's that's one of the things you know I wrote about in the book. It's when I heard that story, I bawled when when my my mother when I read. Do you her, remember this or this no, is no, it's what your mother told you? My mother and my older sister. Uh -huh. My mother told me about that and other things, and when I read her journal during the, the war journal, it, it just opened up. You know, it's just unbelievable. Wow. wow. Uh, you wrote that book at what age? I was. That was about five years ago. Okay. At what age? <laughs> at what age? <laughs> I was uh, sixty-seven. Okay. So seventy-two now. Yeah. But you're here to talk now about your art. Yes, and I, I saw some of your art, your art at the last pop-up sale. Uh, when did you start painting? Um, it started in Germany. I scribbled a lot and stuff, and I was in, a kid in school. You doodler? Yeah, doodler. That's it. And then I came to the United States when I was 16. I went to high school, <clears throat> and I took an art course, and I did pretty well. I got an A in it. So I figured I got a little bit of talent. <clears throat> then I kind of let it be for a while, because when you're working full-time, you don't have a lot of time to devote to things like this, you know. So I picked it, picked it up about um, five years ago, six years ago. I went to art school in Clovis and for a couple of years, and that's when I produced some of the, my artwork, and I loved it. I'm going to uh, do some more in the future, uh, maybe a little abstract painting, and that that's what really people like for some reason. I like to know what I'm looking at, okay? Like a horse is a horse, you know, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm also looking for galleries to take on my artwork. How many um, pieces do you have? I have I've got about 30, 40 pieces of artwork. Of what? What do you, what do you I, like I like to paint? An, I like to draw animals, ships, tanks, planes for military guys, um, sceneries, you know, landscapes. Uh, not so much uh, people. I've drawn some people, but it, it's, it's tough, you know. You've got to have a real talent for that. But I just love drawing and painting, it, it, it brings out your expression, you know, how you feel, and, and it just makes you feel good, okay? How, how is it that in <coughs> your, at your age, that you, this, your, the artistic juices start flowing so much? Um, what I always wanted to do, that's what I always wanted to do, but I couldn't because of my work. I was self-employed for 15 years, and you do, I was working round the clock, didn't have time. By the time you want to do it, you fall asleep, okay? Mm -hmm. But now I have the time. So I'm doing what I always wanted to do. I, I'm totally enjoying it, okay? It, it's a wonderful thing. 
Uh, you'll find my <coughs> paintings at All Things Fresno at my Warner Theater. She has seven of my uh, artwork. Um, and your book. And my book, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, I'm trying to spread it around, get, trying to find more places where to display my artwork and, and do some more of it. Awesome. Is there going to be a follow-up to the book? Oh, yes, I'm, uh, right now I'm writing another book after I got out of the Navy, and it's going to be a fiction. Uh, it's about halfway done. But it won't be serious. It's, it's, I'm a f I like fun things, okay? I'm not a serious kind of guy, okay? And um, that'll be a lot of laughs. When you read the book, it'll be lighthearted. All the things that happened to me, um, some things are a little more serious, you know, because of my mistakes. I almost lost my life a few times, about eight, nine times. I came that close. You came to, close to death eight uh -huh. or nine times by mistake? What were you, what uh, were you of doing time, some of these times? times well, the in Germany, I'm, I was electrocuted in the big shop where I was working. I reached into the plug. It was like 400 volt, and the bottom of it was plastic, was missing. I didn't know. I didn't see it. I reached into and it. Gra grab the prongs? I was gone. My hands were wet. Machines was, I was washing down the shop, <laughs> and well, I was well, gone. What happened? Did it shoot you across the room? Or? No, what happened? I was gone, <coughs> and then I felt myself going through the, roof, through the clouds. I was gone. Thank God I wasn't going that way. I was going that way. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, I was going through the clouds. And I don't know how long I was out. I have no idea. Uh, I guess when I fell, I separated myself from the plug. And I came to. And I still finished up uh, cleaning the shop. Rode my bicycle home 40 kilometers <laughs> to my parents. And I told my parents about it. And my boss, he's got a little shock up. And I went to see a doctor Monday. He says, Monday, he says most guys, they'd be fried, OK? I thought it's another miracle that happened to Did me. Burn your hand? Nothing. Nothing? Absolutely nothing. Tell me about another time. Um, another time was when I was, um, I, was I, w I had a traveling job. I was in Arizona. I was traveling all day and all night. I come across um, the grapevine, 5 o'clock in the morning. I fell asleep. I knew nothing. I was gone. Suddenly there was a red light behind me. Uh, CHP. Also, I pulled over. And I was still, you know, droggy or sleeping. And he says, Well, sir, you've been all over the road. You've been all over the freeway. Had I not stopped you, you wouldn't be here today, he said. So he didn't excite me or nothing. He says, Get a cup of coffee when you go down the hill. <laughs> and, and that officer was down the hill waiting for me. Now, don't tell me he wasn't an angel. Without him, I wouldn't be here today. You run into angels your whole life, haven't you? Yeah. An another time, I was, uh, I think I'm doing travel anymore. I was very, very tired by Edwards Air Force Base. I was going down the road. I fell asleep. And I was in the opposite lane. A truck come at me, a big semi. And just the right time, I woke up. One second later, I would have had a head on crash. And I negotiated like nothing happened, and I drove around that truck. I never lost a car, I never overcorrected, nothing. Wow. I think the trucker probably, you know what happened to him, right? <laughs> oh my God. So wow. these are, God was, it's been with me all my life. All right, Hans Berger, you can see your art at All Things Fresno. All things Fresno. You can see your book at All Things yes. Fresno. The name of the book again, Hans? A Bridge to Cross. In the bookstore. In the bookstore. And you can, ca you can find that book right here on centralvalleytalk.com also. Then, did I tell you why it's called A Bridge to Cross? Tell me. Okay, we came, we, we, there was no way for us to get out of the Russian controlled area, okay? That's former East Germany. We had to cross the Odonaisa River, that's the demarcation line between Poland and Germany. Americans were on one side, Russians on the other. There were hundreds of thousands of refugee, refugees waiting to cross. They were dying by the thousands. There was no medical service, no food provided, nothing, no shelter. Russians did, uh, didn't do anything, okay? They were just dying like f flies. So my mother said, if we got in line 15 or 7, 8 kilometers down the road, we wouldn't be making it. So she walked all the way up to the front of the line. People were hassling her. She said, stupid, what are you doing, stupid lady? Get back where you're supposed to be. So she walked up with us little kids with a cart. And then it was a three or four story building. A Russian officer motioned her to come up. She looked. No, it couldn't be us, you know. In the meantime, the people were still harassing her, you know. So she left us down there as kids. She we were safe, you know, if she felt comfortable. She went up to see the officer, 
and he gave her a ticket to cross that Odonizer River, the bridge. We were the only ones crossing that bridge. Nobody else did. Now that's when my mother reached the other side, she got on her knees and thank God we were in the American sector and the Americans applauded, Americans applauded us when we came across. As another time, God was there. Hans Berger, I could talk to you all Thank day. Thank you. Likewise. All right. Have a nice day. Hey, well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back on the bus. Stick around.